Time lapses, hyperlapses, they're cool effects, but can you get them stable in Resolve? Well, let's see how to do that. Okay, so let's first get our clips for the hyperlapse. Uh, if you go into your media storage location and you select your sequence, in this case I've got DNG files um, over about 115 or so uh, DNG files, and you'll notice here Resolve recognizes this as a DNG sequence. It does the same thing with JPEGs. So we're just going to drag that into our bin. And we're also going to drag a time lapse into our bin. So I've got uh, actually a ground hyperlapse here, a drone hyperlapse with an arcing effect, which adds a little a different flair, as well as just a stationary time lapse. And we're going to see how to stabilize all these clips. Okay. So if we go to our edit section, uh, we've got our uh, hyperlapse click here. I'm going to also drag our other two clips. Okay. So I'm actually going to do the Let's do the time lapse first, just a standard stationary time lapse. So what we want to do here is go into the color tab, and we're going to go now into the stabilizer. So we we'll select the stabilizer here. We're going to uh, select perspective. I usually set this always usually to 0.25. Uh, let me just explain these real quick. The cropping ratio is how hard it tries to stabilize by zooming to get it get it stabilized. The higher the number or when you're at one, there's actually no stabilization. Smooth is the lower the value, the less smoothing. So the higher the value, the more smoothing. And I usually just leave that there um, for most of my drone footage. Now in this case, because it's stationary, it's just a time lapse, I'm just going to select here camera lock. Okay? And then we're just going to go ahead and stabilize. So we'll let this go through. Okay, so it's done. Now if we just look at it, I'm actually just going to play a few frames just to see how it looks. Now it looks like there's a little warping with the arch, and if that's the case, we may want to turn off the camera lock and just adjust these parameters to kind of fine-tune it. But that's how you do it. A perspective is probably the best for this, uh, for stationary uh, type shots, and this is a, a good ballpark. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at our hyperlapse we're going to actually go let's do the arch so what's going on here I'm going to play it so you can get a good idea of what's going on so we're starting from the side but we actually have an arc uh, to the travel so we actually uh, get closer to the arch and then we back away again uh, and that actually is going to cause some challenges with the stabilizer so if I go into the stabilizer for this clip here so the three here perspective which looks at both perspective pan, tilt, zoom, rotation in, an, in the analysis. Similarity looks at everything but perspective. So if you see warping effects with perspective, then it's recommended to go to similarity. And translation only looks at pan and tilt, so just the X and Y axis. So if you've got something you only need to have stabilized in the X and Y, then uh, choose that. Okay, so what we want to do is go ahead and stabilize. Uh, we're going to allow zoom to be checked. I'm going to drop this down to 0.25 for the cropping ratio and about 0.25 for smooth, and we're going to let it go. Okay, it's done. So let's take a quick look at this. That looks pretty good. Oh, there's a little warping there. Yeah, pretty bad there. So instead of perspective, we're going to clear this out and we're going to actually do similarity. Okay, so let's go ahead and stabilize that. Okay, so let's take a look at this now with similarity. Okay, I'm going to pay particular attention to the horizon and the arch. And that looks really good. Yeah, I think that's a winner. 
Okay, so as you can see, most of my drone hyperlapses, especially if I'm not flying in a dolly formation, I usually use similarity or translation. And then I dial this cropping ratio, usually start about 0.25 and leave a smooth at its default value, and I kind of go from there. But usually these numbers work uh, for most of my side-to-side -side or, or uh, arcing type of uh, hyperlapses. Uh, so that's a good tip to uh, pay attention to. Okay, so let's go to our last one, which is our ground hyperlapse. And let's take a look at that. Okay, so it's, it's pretty unsteady. But you'll notice here it's going straight ahead. And then we tilt to kind of focus in at the uh, top of the building. So that's going to be a little more challenging. But we'll go here to our... Uh, tracker and we'll go into the stabilizer and this time what I'm going to recommend that we do is do perspective and I'm going to set this cropping ratio to 0.25 smooth 0.25 and zoom and let's go ahead and stabilize it okay so it's done let's take a quick look at this Okay, it looks pretty good. Okay, so let me go back. There's actually a couple of glitches at towards the end. I I I shot this handheld with just uh, I was 10 degrees out there, so I was by the by the end I was pretty much in a rush, and you can see I kind of uh, skewed the picture there. So what I typically do when the skew is not too much, I keyframe it. So I'm going to select this, go into Inspector, set a keyframe right here, advance to the location where I've got the problem, and let's let's rotate that. Now when I look at that, if I go back. I need to go a little bit more than that. You can see very quickly that's a lot. Um, it's probably more than what I typically like to have to adjust. So I'm just going to cancel this out. I'm just going to cut that frame out. Okay, so I'm just going to take my blade and zoom in here. All right, right there. So I'll delete this. All right. So I still need to make a slight correction there. So I'm going to go ahead and group these into a compound clip. And I'm going to go back into Inspector. And right here, I'm going to lock it down with a keyframe. I'm going to do a slight rotation here. Okay, and then here I'm going to do a, another slight rotation. That's pretty close. Okay, I think we're in good shape. Now what we want to do is we want to fix this output blanking here. So we're going to go ahead and scale the clip up. So right about there. Looks pretty good. I want to make sure I can still see the top of the building because I think that has a dramatic effect uh, to it all and as long as I can see that I don't mind scaling it so it looks pretty good okay well guys that's all you have to do if you got any questions on this just please leave them in the comments below otherwise please like and subscribe peace